Now we voxelize these meshes separately to keep them as separate objects, but then we poly reduce them and UV them together so they share the same poly count and UV space, the same atlas, but we need to bake them separately now too. So what I'm gonna do, hit tab, and again, we'll drop in a transform node like we did earlier. And right off the bottom of this game res here, we're just gonna pull that into the transform node. And instead of transforming all of our objects for this group, we're gonna do the drop down menu, and we're gonna say, move the base over only. And that base will just translate this, say, 25 units in X. Oh, you know what? Let's make it, let's make it 50. So we're just going to move that out of the way. Now, in order for these things to bake, I need to have the high res in the same place as the low res, because right now, if I go up here to back to this base geo and make that visible, the base is sitting over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt drag off this transform node. And now this base geo here, I'm going to plug into this transform. And now if I make this visible, we see that the high res of the base has moved over to this side here. And actually, I dragged in the wrong one. What you're seeing right here is we lost the poly paint, and that's because we went to the voxelized mesh. You can transfer that poly paint back, and we'll get into that later. But really what I want is I'm going to take this bottom of this base geo here, and I'm going to middle mouse drag, and I'm going to plug that one into the transform. Now you see it's not moving anything because it's still that trans that transform node that I alt dragged out still has the group as name is base. Let's go ahead and delete that out of there. And now it's going to move everything associated with this node over. So now our high res matches our game res. So if I have our game res selected and then our high res with the blue, you can see both of them there occupying the same space. Now we're going to merge our two high res together. So we'll hit tab and then drop in another merge node. So we're going to merge our two high reses together. And then our low reses still match our high reses. So here's our low res. Here's our merged high res. So now let's do another simple baker. And again, low res goes on the left side, high res goes on the right side. Simple baker, all the defaults are fine. Go ahead and hit render. And there we go, we got a result. Now, I know these are separate. You don't have to transform them back together. If you remember our soften normals geometry here, they're all put together. The simple baker is just a preview of what it looks like when it bakes. So if we want to see the softened normals version where they're both put back together with the new baked information, all you got to do, and let's go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger. We're getting kind of small over there. I'm going to give a little bit more real estate to our node graph here so you can see better. Uh, I'm going to hit tab. Let's use another game dev quick material. We use this to soften our edges on our high res geometry. Now we're going to use it to apply a material to this geometry. So let's go ahead and make it visible. And just like in the material in the simple baker, we're going to take this tint and we're going to drop that so it's a nice medium gray. And then for the base color, it's going to navigate us right to that bake folder and we're just going to plug in uh, AO. And then for the normal texture, plug in the normal. And you may need to flip Y to get it to show up correctly. And now you can see that they're all put together. They're all uh, baked nicely. They're all sharing the same UVs. Again, if we go to the UV map and then back here, they're all sharing the same UVs. So now this one, we can put in an FBX export. By default, the output file is going to be put in, again, the root directory where the HIP file is saved, named out.fbx. If you want to change that, feel free. If not, you can keep these defaults and then just hit save to disk. And that'll go ahead and save your FBX right here in the root directory of your folder here. And then your render images are in that render folder. So there you go. You've baked these two things separately. We've talked about base functionality of the Houdini game dev tools. And I hope we've had a pretty good time doing it. Now, you may think, well, if you go way back up here to our original mesh, and we go to the selection here, and we do select by name attribute, you're going to say, well, we have all these pieces, so is there a way for us to voxelize all these things separately, bake them all separately, and then bring them all together uh, for a game res? And the answer is yes, that's what we're going to get into next. So hang tight, and um, if you can, bring in your own versions of this geometry, Bring in your own geo, go through these steps, make your own game reses really quick. It's really quick, really fun to do. And then when you have more complex geometry, head over to the next section and we'll talk about how to do all of this in a more efficient way.